Hey everyone, Reynolds here. And in this video, we are going to be talking about how to prepare for technical interviews. And I'll be breaking that down to three categories. Three. First is to know what type of questions that they might ask you. The second is to know the type of exercises you might be required to do during the interview. And then the third, the different types of resources you can use to prepare, all right? If you're new to this channel, I'm a software developer for over 10 years and a coach now, and I help like new programmers come into the game, but not only just to learn how to code, but also build their brand. So if that's of interest to you, definitely hit that subscribe button with that notification bell so you can check out more videos that I put out. But without further ado, let's jump right in. All right, folks, the first thing that I'd like to talk about is the type of questions that you might get for technical interviews. And it really breaks down into three different categories. And I kind of made up these categories, but it's categories that most people don't really talk about when they're, when they're talking about technical interviews. The first is general non-technical questions. Um, the second is programming at a high level those type of questions and the third are algorithm driven type of questions so let's talk about the first non-technical questions are the ones that are usually asked by HR people so really to get past that you just need to have a good personality that's really what it boils down to so be upbeat engage in the conversation listen to what they're asking and a really good thing to do is to be able to drop some questions that show that you've done some research on the company's history and that usually goes a long way now for programming questions at a high level usually revolve around questions that are maybe object oriented programming like what's polymorphism what are some of the pillars of object-oriented programming, which polymorphism is part of, along with inheritance and encapsulation um, and abstraction. So like knowing those, all right? Um, I can like pull up real quick um, some examples of questions that I've been asked. Like these type of questions also doesn't necessarily specifically need to be only about your coding language, but it could be about databases also like for example do you understand how to uh, increase the performance of a database of a database such as knowing what indexing is and also what primary keys are do you understand different joins so all those are high level general programming questions and the best way to accumulate these type of questions to have answers to is to look at the job description, see the skills that they're looking for, and then Google questions, interview questions for those skills. That's one way. The other way is actually going on interviews and then making note of those questions. I like to personally record my interviews if it's on the on the if I'm on the phone with them. And then when I'm done with the interview, I take detailed notes because if I ever miss a question, I never want to miss it again. So there's no reason to ever miss a question twice. So take detailed notes and answers to the questions that you have been asked that you've missed. If you got them, then maybe you don't need to write them down. But if you missed them, write them down. The third type of question that you could get are algorithm-based questions. And the best way to prepare for those is by going to websites like LeetCode. LeetCode is a website where you just practice different type of algorithms. Um, if you're new to algorithms, I recommend taking a course on algorithms. I actually have one and it's on lynda.com. Um, I could drop a link so you could check it out. It's called Learning C-Sharp Algorithms, but the algorithms themselves apply to any type of languages. So it's not just C-Sharp. So for example, if I click on this right here, there's linked lists, stacks, queues, binary searches, lin linear searches. 
Um, so those are like some basic ones. It's more of an introduction course, um, but going through something like this could get you familiar with them, and then you can go on to lead code and do some more advanced algorithms. So that's what it comes down to when you're doing interviews in terms of questions you could be asked. There's general non-technical questions, then there's your high-level programming questions, and then the third are algorithm-driven questions, three different categories. One thing that I always suggest to some of uh, my students um, is to try to find out what type of questions the job that you're going to interview with will ask. You ask your recruiter, and good recruiters will, will tell you. Now, I'm not asking to ask what exactly the specific question and answer is, but hey, are they going to be asking questions that are uh, more related to front end development or back end or database? Um, is there a way you can uh, give me this type of information? This way I can like prepare better. And if it's a good recruiter, they will try to do that so that you can win at that interview because if you win then the recruiter wins and everybody wins and it's a better world so when it comes to coding to demonstrate what you know we're talking about basically exercises that you can do and one of them might not necessarily be specifically coding but it could just be whiteboarding and whiteboarding is an art in itself so i would recommend to prepare for whiteboarding looking at some videos of people whiteboarding and then you actually practicing it yourself also. So if you were to go to YouTube, for example, there's a really good video, I think one of the best ones that I saw, um, where they showed a guy whiteboarding for Google. Let's look at Google interview whiteboard. It should be the first one. It's this one right here. Um, how to work at Google example coding in an engineering interview, but it's all pretty much whiteboarding. So I would look at something like that. Whiteboarding, to be a good whiteboarder, all you need to be able to do besides understanding the concept of what you need to demonstrate is to be able to speak clearly what you are thinking as you are demonstrating it. Because once the interviewer sees how you're thinking and they appreciate that, then you are winning. Even if you don't solve the problem completely, sometimes if they appreciated your thought process, you still move forward. So that's one type of exercise that they might ask you to do. Now, the other type just boils down to programming. And you can either program on your own an assignment that they ask you to do, or pair program, where they pair you up with someone else. When you pair program, you are either going to be a driver, the one that writes the code, or a navigator. And sometimes they might have you alternate. That's how pair programming works. So you could look that up. In my um, experience, I haven't been asked to pair program much, but it's still good to know and practice just in case. Um, however, the more traditional route is just to ask you to code something on your own. And to practice that, I would say whatever you're learning or whatever you're interviewing for, whether it be Python or Java or .NET or JavaScript, know how to write a small program that implements CRUD operations. CRUD meaning being able to see R U D. C for create a record, R for reading a record, U for updating a record, and D deleting a record. So for example, you could have a, an app that is a to-do list, or you could come up with something a little bit more creative than that, that to-do list is kind of overdone. But it should be able to like create a record of an item on that list. It should be able to modify that record, change it to something else, it should be able to delete that record. And when I say modify, I mean update. So that's the U in CRUD. It should be able to delete that record. And then also, obviously, if it showed the record, it read it. Okay, so if you could do CRUD operations on whatever language that you are interviewing for, you will have a, a good head start if you had practiced on your own. So now let's talk about 
resources, which we already kind of started like touching on. In order to prepare yourself for an interview, there's a few things that you just want to have at your arsenal. And the very first and most important are the notes that you took when you've gone on interviews or notes that you've taken ahead of time from researching uh, online practice interview questions. And you want to be good at organizing it. I like to have answers to my interview questions on my notes written in the way that if I were to read it, I did not sound like I was reading it from a dictionary, but I sound like I'm talking normally. So write your answers as if you are speaking them out. Um, another resource that I'd like to point out is a website called interviewing.io. They are a website that you can use to access individuals that help you practice interviewing. I've never used them, but I heard good things about them. So I would, I would give that a try. I've already talked about lead code, but I'll mention it one more time. It's a great place to go and practice algorithms. Meetup.com is a great site to meet other individuals that are coders and practice programming with them or learn new skills from presentations. Um, and maybe you could even like um, create your own group if you don't see the type of group that you want on here. Sometimes in life you just have to create your own opportunities. Another resource that I'd like to point out is one called Quizlet. It's essentially like flashcards online and it's a great tool to use to study. I've always been a fan of flashcards in real life and online. This is great also. What's uh, kind of cool is not only you can make your own flashcard, but you can find other people's flashcards and use those for topics that are related to what you're studying. So I can go to search flashcard and put in let's say Java and yeah it looks like there's some people that created some Java flashcards already and look at that so and there's some questions I could click here and let's see here yeah and, that, and there's the answer why do we need to implement clonable interface and then here's your answer. I'd be careful with the, I would double check answers that you get on here though, because these are regular people um, doing their study material. They might have something that's slightly off or incorrect. So always double check your, um, your resources. And that applies to even when you're just Googling. If you find something on Stack Overflow that's an answer to a question, at least check three different websites to make sure that the answers are consistent. But Quizlet, remember that and uh, try giving that a shot. On Amazon.com, there's a book called The Cracking the Coding Interview. It's a very popular book. It's pretty much all about algorithms. Um, if you're using lead code a lot, you should be good, but I would have this as an arsenal also and, 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 and check that out because it's actually written by, I believe it's written by someone who used to work at Google, but it's definitely written for to prepare you to interview at companies like Google. And last but not least, there's a couple of courses that I have. I mentioned that there is the learning algorithms course that I have that you can check out. Um, but also I have one that's focused strictly on interviewing. Nail your C-sharp developer interview. I, I say C-sharp here, but really everything that I talk about, most of what I talk about can apply to other languages. It just so happens that the demonstrations that I do here are in C-sharp. But if we go into here, um, I talk about a lot of concepts that apply to many different languages, such as interfaces, abstract and static classes, generics, um, 
object oriented related questions and so forth so this part right here dot net that's more specific to dot net but the others are very general questions so so you should at least check that out all right so that's it hope you guys enjoyed that one final note that i want to mention is that when it comes to interviewing it's really a skill that you need to be good at just like any other skill and like any other skill it takes practice and the thing that's funny about interviews is that most people do it when they absolutely need to do it and they're kind of like rusty so my motto is is to always be interviewing even when you don't need a job you don't need to be doing it every week but at least once every three months just so that you could keep your skills sharp on the edge where you need to be so that when you do need to interview you won't be rusty you'll be already ready that's it for now and i'll catch you in the next video